Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Gio, and this story is called Flamingo. I hope you enjoy. Seven o'clock in the evening, I stepped out of the Uber, garment bag and suitcase in tow, and endured the heat. It wasn't like this back in Ash Hollow. I had just gotten off the plane at McCarran International and was here to see my dad and my stepmom, Clara. I hadn't seen them since they came to my graduation three years ago. Talk about awkward. Dad had flown in with his new wife. Mom had her boyfriend. And there was little lonely me wanting to hide somewhere. Everybody had plastic smiles. I had hated Dad for leaving us. But then we've been talking this last year. Turns out, Dad wasn't completely to blame. I'd just been too naive to notice the friction. I would give Clara a chance, as he requested, which was the unspoken purpose of this trip. Dad and Clara live in this sprawling maze of a condo complex, complete with pool, landscaped lawns, nicely trimmed shrubs, and stylish rock gardens. The condos weren't high-rise, but more like a row of duplexes along curvy roads. How much do they pay a month to take care of all this? I had another reason for coming, one which I had only confessed to my best friend. I needed a change. My last relationship had ended badly, and I wanted away from Ash Hollow, away from the memories, away from the pain. I wanted a new life, which I hoped Vegas could offer. After my trip, the drive from Ash Hollow to Bangor, the flight from Bangor to Chicago, an hour layover, and then from Chicago to Vegas, a dip in the pool would be ideal, except I'm exhausted. Seven o'clock here was ten o'clock main time, and something about flying made me even tireder. Something landed on my hand, a little beetle with a red back with some spots on it, a ladybug. Somebody must be gardening nearby. It crawled around a minute, then flew off. The beige condo had twin wind chimes, one on each side of the front door. A rainbow flag hung next to the garage, and a statue of a Chinese imperial guard dog watched the door. Was the rainbow flag because they wanted to show they accepted me? I knocked. A few seconds later, a man opened the door with the ringing of chimes. This house wasn't like my apartment. It smelled of some type of incense and had twinkling white lights decorating the wall and ceiling. Long, multicolored curtains decorated the walls and a large picture of some galaxy graced the wall above the sofa. The room had odd-shaped octagonal mirrors and one wall had a shelf with family pictures on it. You must be Curtis, the man said, swinging the door wide open. A blast of air conditioning hit me. Welcome to Vegas. Been here before? He said. First timer, I said, and walked out of the heat. Vegas is not as weird as you think, unless you go to the Strip. I'm Harrison, but nobody calls me that. Call me Flamingo, he said. I had never met the man, but I knew of him. My twenty-two-year-old stepbrother, tall, striking, hair dyed pastel pink, trimmed short on the sides and long and wavy on top. Contact lenses also pink, black jeans and a pale blue tank top. He had a week's growth of beard and also wore something around his neck, but kept it under his shirt. Both ears were pierced, the left with one stud, the right with four. The tank had one dramatic phrase written across it in rainbow letters, Nevada Pride. That meant the gay pride flag outside was to show support for him. I wore a plain white t-shirt and plain faded jeans, and my hair was plain brown, and I couldn't grow a beard if I wanted. How could I even relate with him? I'm only a guy from a small town in Maine, and now I was in the party capital of the world. I faked a polite smile to hide how uncomfortable I was. Flamingo took the garment bag and led the way into the condo. You'll be staying in my old room. Where will you stay? I asked trying to act casual and normal when something inside me wanted to run. Meeting the other half of my family scared me. I don't live here. Mom and Nick thought it a good idea that we finally get to know each other, 
so Mom has planned a welcome to the family barbecue for tonight. I hope you like veggie burgers and barbecued corn, and we have packets of all kinds of things on the grill. You haven't lived until you've had a barbecued tostada. And we've got the dough made for pizzas on the grill, which I'm grilling right now. And I'm getting the kebabs ready. We even have vegan pepperoni, Flamingo said. I had died and gone to another planet. Vegan what? What about steak and burgers? I said. Meat has never graced the grill or this house. Didn't you know? Your dad married into a family of vegetarians, and you'll love the food. Mom's an amazing cook and converted him years ago. You'll see. Now let's get you settled in, and then I've got to go watch the grill, Flamingo said. What was I going to eat? I didn't know these people, or my dad. Where are our parents? I asked. Mom and Nick ran to the store to get last-minute supplies. You have to know Mom. She wanted everything perfect, but true to form, they got stuck in traffic. Welcome to Vegas, home of gambling, shopping, nightlife, and traffic jams, Flamingo said. Vegetarians, vegan pepperoni, barbecued pizza, I asked. And a stepbrother named Flamingo with pink hair. Bit of a culture shock, I know. But if you need anything, I'm here, he said. Thanks, I said, watching the guy walk off. One small problem. I was still on main time. Exhausted? Dead tired? Was it the beginning stages of jet lag? I could sleep for twelve hours, and these people were so different. This city was so different. Mom had never mentioned this side of Dad. He'd come alive with his new wife. Dad never barbecued back home, because Mom didn't like the cleanup. In some ways, I was getting to know an all-new person named Dad. This would take a lot of getting used to. I'll get used to it better at the pool. At least that's something I know. I've been a summer lifeguard since I was 14. I changed into my suit, grabbed a towel, and followed the smell of something good. I walked past the shelf of family pictures. There was a large photo of Claire and my dad, their wedding photo, and various pictures of Flamingo as a kid, some as he was now. Only the last few years showed him with pink hair. The most current photo was of him, shirtless, performing on stage, singing with the band. A tag on the bottom said, Club Diggory, and it was dated three months ago. There were several pictures of me as a kid, and in middle school, but none of me now. Because I'd been mad at my dad, I never sent him any of me. The last one he had was me graduating high school. There was none of Mom. Big surprise. I picked up the one of Dad and Clara getting married. Though I had been there, I didn't enjoy it. My world had crashed into the invulnerable wall called divorce. It still hurt. I didn't belong with Dad's new family. I didn't even know him anymore. I didn't even belong with Mom and her live-in boyfriend. She'd turned into a stranger. I set the picture down and went back where Flamingo was lured over a six-foot-long stainless steel space shuttle of a grill. Spotless, it gleamed showroom silver. Dad and Clara had set up the area with portable tables and chairs, with a green tablecloth and napkins, and a large green sparkly decoration in the middle. Green was my favorite color growing up. On the end of the table was a green cake with chocolate roses that said, Welcome to the family, Curtis. Around the yard were tiki torches, though not yet lit. A cooler by the table held several bottles of wine chilling in ice. The table was set for ten, with one chair set at the end, probably for the guest of honor. Anybody want to take a guess who that might be? That meant we waited for six. Dad and Clara were trying to make me feel welcome. I had never felt so out of place. My stomach became nervous and a little sour. What was I doing here? Flamingo talked with someone on the phone when he saw me. His eyebrows raised. I whispered, swimming pool. He reached into his pocket, pulled out his keys, and removed one which he tossed to me and said, I'll call you back later. Then he faced me. Before you go, one thing. What's that? I said, playing with the key. Did he know how uncomfortable I was? Mom and Nick, well, 
Nick especially, were nervous about inviting you here. I know you have history with him, and I don't blame you for being angry, but they're trying hard to make nice. Go easy on them, Flamingo said. I blabbed words without knowing what came out of my mouth. Yeah, I was angry and bitter. My family was falling apart around me, and I kept thinking that if I had been a better son, things could have been different. They still divorced. Weren't you mad when your parents divorced? I asked. No. My dad was a son of a witch, and I don't miss him one minute. When the divorce was finalized, I threw a party for Mom. I think everybody celebrated. I guess you're lucky your father was a nice guy, Flamingo said. I didn't know what to say to that. Flamingo hadn't been there for the fights between Mom and Dad. I went to the pool, now mostly empty of people, and found a lounge chair. I stared at the sky at the sun as it set towards the horizon, and thought. Thought about life, about the pain the divorce had brought that I could never tell my parents about. They had issues of their own. Eventually, I drowsed, and while I was in the halfway point between sleep and dreams, I wondered about the man who was my stepbrother. What if I got to know him, or even dated him? As I dreamed, I imagined living in Vegas full time, meeting Flamingo at his concerts, of him showing me the sights of Vegas, of holding hands, of our first kiss, of living life with him. A stupid dream. We're so different. But he is cute, and evidently talented, and easy to talk to. Was I developing a crush on him after meeting him only once? I think so. A shadow blocked out the sun, a man stood over me with pink hair and a blue tank top. Flamingo. He handed me an ice-cold cola. Our folks are back, but I need a minute away from them. My mom is the matchmaker from hell and drives me crazy. Get this. My sign is Aquarius, the water bearer. She is a new age astrologist and is trying to set me up Saturday night with a 33-year-old accountant who's a Virgo. But my sign gets along best with Gemini at least according to the internet. Anyway, I have a gig that night, and Mom wants me to invite him. If you stay here for long, Mom will set you up with somebody too. If it gets too much, you're welcome to sleep on my couch. Flamingo took his shirt off and sat on the lounge chair next to mine. His necklace swung free, the setting sun glinting off a talisman of a ladybug. What's that? I asked. I've been really unlucky with the guys I've dated. Ladybugs are supposed to bring you luck in love. Can you tell I'm desperate, he said. Is the ladybug working, I asked. Flamingo ran both hands through his hair, then placed them behind his head, and stared at the sky, and quietly said, Don't know when the ladybug will work. I bought it a couple of weeks ago. You don't know someone who is gay, about my age, a Gemini, doesn't mind pink hair, likes alternative rock, can kiss a vegetarian, and enjoys long walks where all we do is talk. Does such a person exist because I can't find one? I smiled, reached over, and took his hand. I'm not a vegetarian, but I am a Gemini, and I need someone to show me the city. More importantly, I'm free Saturday night. Need a date? Flamingo squeezed my hand and said, With someone as cute as you, I'd love it. But tell me something first. Oh, I said, as a ladybug landed on my chest. Flamingo leaned over, placed his finger next to it, and the little bug crawled on it. Was it a sign? The ladybug crawled around on Flamingo's finger a few seconds, then flew off. Tell me what you want on your pizza, and I'll make it for you, he said. As I watched the little bug fly away, I smiled. The ladybug had brought me someone I could fall in love with. I couldn't explain it, but sitting next to Flamingo, I suddenly felt like I belonged. I took hold of Flamingo's hand and said, Make it look like a ladybug, and I'll split it with you. I'd like that, he said, and we shared a secret smile. I love Vegas already, and I am really going to like Flamingo. The end. Thank you for sharing.
this story with me, everybody. I appreciate it. I'll see you next week. Peace.